Middle East. Mid 13th century. Islamic world under its biggest challenge. The ferocious Mongol hordes invading every direction from Asia to Europe. Islamic kingdoms in Central Asia and Turkey were conquered by the Mongol, including the mighty Kresmian Empire in Persia with its large territory of modern Iran, Afghanistan, Uzbekistan, and Turkmenistan, fell in year 1220. So did Eurasian steppes now part of modern Russia, Ukraine and Kazakhstan inhabited by Kipchak Turkic nomadic tribes. Leaving the powerful Ayyubid Sultanate in Egypt and Syria, and the fading out Abbasid Caliphate in Baghdad as the last strongholds of Islamic world and the holy cities of Mecca, Medina and Jerusalem from the Mongol threat. The Mongol horde left trail of destructions and terror of fear in every villages and cities along their way. Those who resist would get no mercy. Those who survived would be lucky if only taken as prisoners and sold as slaves. Among those who survived, three of them will later become heroes and saviors of Islamic world and the Holy Land. After witnessing their parents slaughtered and their houses as well as their cities destroyed by the war. These three children who came from different places, ended up in the same place, which was Cairo, Egypt. Mahmud bin Mamdud was a Kresmian noble son, sold as a slave and brought to Cairo by his master. So was Babers, a Kipchak Turkic slave bought in Anatolia by an Egyptian noble who then brought him to Cairo. Mahmud and Babers then joined military training specifically designed for slaves, the elite Mamluk unit. Thanks to their intelligence and natural talents, both of them ascended fast in their military career. Rukan al-Din Bibers became a commander under Mamluk Amir Faris ad-Din Akte. While Mahmud became the deputy of Ez al-Din Abuk, a Mamluk high rank and the Sultan's personal aide. Mahmud then known as Saif ad-Din Kutuz. A similar story with Shajar al-Dur, who also either Turkish or Armenian slave then bought in Levant by Asali Ayyub, an Ayyubid prince and emir in Damascus. She then married by the prince and had a son. After Asali Ayyub inherited the throne from his father in 1240, he took Shajar al-Dur with him to Cairo. Known as beautiful, intelligent and pious, Shajar al-Dur became the Sultan's favorite wife who always accompanied him wherever he goes. Sultan Asali had so much reliant on his Mamluk he considered more loyal to him than regular Egyptian soldiers. Especially during internal conflict with his own uncle, Asali Ishmael, who took over control of Damascus. While he was busy fighting the rebels in Syria and Palestine, a letter came from the King of France, Louis IX. King Louis IX started the Seventh Crusade. He and his massive crusader army had arrived in Cyprus, and preparing to attack Egypt. Instead of retaking Jerusalem, King Louis decided to attack the center of Islamic stronghold, Cairo. So Sultan Asali then swiftly returned to Egypt with his army, to the city of Damietta, to confront the crusader army. Already seriously ill since he was in Syria, Sultan Asali conditions deteriorated when he arrived in Damietta. He then stretched to his better protected palace in Al-Mansura to be treated, where he finally passed away in 22 November 1249. He didn't left a will, while his son and heir, Al-Muazam Turan Shah was in Turkey. The vacancy or unsmooth transition of power during critical time with the enemy at the gate directly threatening the capital would endanger the continuity of the ruling dynasty. In this time of crisis, Shajar al-Dur, the wife of the deceased Sultan then took initiative to conceal her husband's death until Turan Shah arrived. She sent Faris ad-Din Akte to bring him back to Egypt. Acted on behalf of her ill husband, she led the council with ministers and generals. In dealing with the crusaders, who already landed and took the city of Damietta, ready to march to Cairo, Shajar al-Dur agreed to Biber's suggestion to defend and confront them at al-Mansura. 
She appointed Bibers to lead the defense along with other Mamluk senior officers such as Itzel Din Aba, Saif Ad Din Kutuz and Kalawun. The Crusader army with their Knight Templar led by Robert of Artois, the brother of Louis IX, besieged al Mansura in a February 12, 50. The Crusader surprise attacked on the Ayyubid's army outpost outside of the city successfully dispersed them and killed their commander. Bibers and the Mamluks defending inside the city then set up a trap by opening the city gate. Assuming their enemy had left it deserted, Robert of Artois and his cavalry rushed in and entered the town of al Mansura. Bibers then ordered the gate to be closed so the Crusaders found themselves trapped and surrounded by the Mamluks and the townsmen. Only five of the Templars managed to get out alive from al Mansura. Others were killed including Robert of Artois. The new Sultan Turan Shah arrived in 27th of February 1250 then took over the command and led his army in the Battle of Fariskor in 6th of April 1250. Ended with a total defeat of the Crusaders. At least 15,000 were killed and 12,000 were captured, including King Louis IX himself. He then released after paying ransom worth 400,000 dinner. The victory had risen the Mamluks' prestige. They became the most influential political power in Egypt. Disappointed with Sultan Turan Shah's treatment towards them, the Bari Mamluk then overthrew him and installed Shajar al dur as the new Sultan of Egypt. Ended the reign of the Ayyubids dynasty in Egypt, but not somewhere else, as their loyalist in Syria refused to pay homage to Shajar al dur They prefer to surrender Damascus to a Nasir Yusuf, the Ayyubids emir of Aleppo and recognized him as Sultan. So did the Caliph al-Mustasim in Baghdad who gave a strong reaction by sending a letter to the Mamluk leaders in Egypt saying If you do not have men there, tell us, so we can send you men. As traditions at that time, without recognition from the Abbasid Caliph, the rule of Shajar al dur didn't have a legitimacy. Shajar al dur responded wisely by abdicate after just 80 days in power and chose to appoint Mamluk's emir as al-Din Abak as the new Sultan. She then married him to ease off political tension. Mark the beginning of a new era in Egypt. The Mamluk Sultanate which would reign until 1517. The reign of Sultan Abuk marked with numerous conflict with the Ayyubid in Syria as well as the internal conflict with the Bari Mamluk. Considered as a threat to his throne, Abuk eliminated the leader of Bari Mamluk, Faris ad-Din Akte. Akte's loyalist Mamluk officers then fled to Syria and joined the Ayyubi, including Bibers. Abuk appointed his confidant, Saif ad-Din Kutuz as vice-sultan and commander-in-chief of the army. In year 1257, Sultan Abuk was assassinated by his own guard ordered by Shadar al dur after finding his intention to remarry and removed her from power. She was then arrested and killed by the order of the new Sultan al Mansur Ali, son of Abuk from his first wife. Meanwhile in Baghdad, Caliph al-Mustasim received a letter of ultimatum from Hulagu Khan, the ruler of Mongols Ilkhanate, demanding him to surrender and submit to the Mongols which the Caliph refused it. Unfortunately, the Abbasid no longer had a strong military power. Even though as a Caliph he could summon troops from other Islamic states, but most of the states already crushed or submitted to the Mongol, while Cairo and Damascus busy with their own conflict. Finally the Mongol arrived and besieged Baghdad in 29th of January 1258. The siege lasted for 13 days. Lack of preparation, caused by betrayal of his own courtier, had weakened the Caliphal army and made them unable to defend the city of Baghdad. Finally in 13th of February 1258, Mongol forces led by Hulagu entered the city of Baghdad, destroyed and burned the city to the ground, including the House of Wisdom, the world largest library in its era, and hundreds of thousands of its collections also destroyed and thrown away to the river. Not even civilians could escape the slaughter. Hundreds of thousands of Baghdad citizens were executed including the Caliph himself and almost all of his family. The fall of Baghdad put an end to the Abbasid Caliphate as well as shocked and spread the terror of fear to entire Islamic world. In 1st of March 1260 it was Damascus' turn which fell to the Mongol. Sultan Anasir Yusuf who fled the city then captured at Gaza leaving the Mamluk as the only Islamic force remaining who stand between Hulagu and the Holy Land. Hulagu then prepared his army to march southward through Palestine directly into Egypt. But before that, as usual he sent an ultimatum to ruling Mamluk leader, Saif ad-Din Kutuz which saying, From the King of Kings of the East and West, the Great Khan. To Kutuz the Mamluk, 
who fled to escape our swords. You should think of what happened to other countries and submit to us. You have heard how we have conquered a vast empire, and have purified the earth of the disorders that tainted it. We have conquered vast areas, massacring all the people. You cannot escape from the terror of our armies. Where can you flee? What road will you use to escape us? Our horses are swift, our arrows sharp, our swords like thunderbolts, our hearts as hard as the mountains, our soldiers as numerous as the sand. Fortresses will not detain us, nor armies stop us. Your prayers to God will not avail against us. We are not moved by tears nor touched by lamentations. Only those who beg our protection will be safe. Hasten your reply before the fire of war is kindled. Resist and you will suffer the most terrible catastrophes. We will shatter your mosques and reveal the weakness of your God and then will kill your children and your old men together. At present you are the only enemy against whom we have to march. Saifad Din Qutuz just recently took over power in Egypt from the teenage Sultan al-Mansur Ali. He argued that a strong leadership was needed especially for the upcoming war against Mongol. Sultan Qutuz responded the threatening and insulting letter from Hulagu right away by beheading the Mongols' envoy. A declaration of war and an invitation for the Mongols' invasion. But God had another plan. The death of Monke Khan, the great Khan of Mongol, forced Hulagu to return to their capital in Mongolia for the election of the new great Khan and secure the succession. He took his main forces with him and left the remaining 20,000 in Shiria under the command of his most trusted general, Kitbuka. Kutuz quickly took advantage of this situation. He assembled 20,000 troops and marched to Palestine. While Bibers, who fled from Damascus when the city fell to the Mongol, later joined Kutuz in Palestine. Though the two of them had conflict in the past and Bibers assumed Kutuz played his role in his mentor, Faris ad Din Akte assassination, but for now he chose to take side with Kutuz against a formidable common enemy, the Mongols and their allies. After learning the Mamluk maneuver, Kitbuka then moved quickly with his troops, reinforced by their allies from the Kingdom of Georgia, Armenia and troops provided by their puppet emirs in Shiria. Their strength were evenly matched the Mamluk forces. The two armies finally met at Ain Jalut, near the city of Nazareth, Palestine in September 3, 1260. The Mongols were first to advance and attack fiercely. But with combination of Biber's tactical intelligence and Kutu's inspiring leadership the Mamluk were able to trap the Mongol and made them surrounded. But their enemy didn't give up easily and almost broke through their line. Sultan Kutu's then threw away his combat helmet, rushed in towards the battlefield while yelling. For my Islam. The Mamluk finally defeated the Mongols and their allies. Thousands of Mongols were killed including their commander, Hitbuka. The surviving Mongols were then chased all over Syria and Levant and crushed by the Mamluks. The rest retreated to their own territory. A very important victory and proven to be a turning point of the world history by putting the Mongols' expansion to the west into halt. Psychologically broke the existing myth of the invincible Mongols. Though it was not the first time they were defeated, but it was the first in significant battle and first in a close combat. Unfortunately, Saif ad Din Qutuz couldn't enjoy this victory for very long. On their way back to Cairo, a group of Mamluk officers conspired against him and assassinated the Sultan. Azahir Rukn al-Din Bibers then took over the power in the Mamluk Sultanate. Though their reigns were short, both Shujar al-Dur and Saif ad Din Qutuz were the chosen, destined to lead the Islamic world, to protect the Holy Lands from disasters and destructions brought by their enemies. So was Bibers. Under his leadership, the Mamluk Sultanate not only managed to neutralize the Mongols' threat, but also managed to retake territory still occupied by the Crusaders and became a dominant power in the Levant. Bibers, a slave turned into a king, the most feared by his enemy and a hero to the Islamic world. However, the Mongols' threat wasn't over yet. Soon after he secured the ascension off Kublai Khan as the new great Khan, Hulagu returned to his domain in Persia. He assembled a massive army in preparing to revenge the Mamluks. With their full strength it was almost impossible to defeat the Mongol. But once again, God had another plan. 
Another unexpected hero arose, preventing Hulagu's intentions, saving the Islamic world and the Holy Lands.